Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a red wooden blackbird with a nest and some li lilacs. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm hearing myself talk over here. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Got my husband Mark helping me today. <laughs> hey there, everybody. <laughs> He's man in chat, so if you've got questions, you can ask those in chat while I'm painting and we'll try to answer and let's get started. I made air quotes with helping, but yeah. I, I realized nobody could see them. <laughs> That's oh, too late. darn it. I know. <laughs> I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is a Frederick's Mixed Media Canvas Board. Um, I haven't done anything to it except for just kind of tried to sketch it out. I was trying to decide if I could fit my composition on this size um, or if I wanted to go to... Uh, with a square like the reference photo but um, I did the other two in this series on this side of size canvas so um, we'll go ahead and fit this one in there and this may be the last one in the series I don't know so you guys need to let me know in the comments if you're liking it and if you want to continue because I've got lots of birds I'd like to do so I will never run it out of birds that I want to paint <laughs> or nests for that matter <laughs> let's go over colors <clears throat> I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, in, cat, oh no, what is that? Yellow oxide, sorry. Um, Naples yellow hue, that's a color that if you don't have it, um, you can leave it off, but it's like a yellow oxide with a little bit of the um, unbleached titanium in it already mixed up together, um, but it'll be good for our nest color. And then I've got... Um, Cadmium yellow light, Indian yellow hue, cadmium red light, quinacridone magenta, doxazine purple, ultramarine blue, thala blue green shade, cobalt teal, thala green yellow shade, and then again, this is the actually Titan buff in the fluid and unbleached tit titanium in the um, heavy body acrylic side by side there. And then this one is um, titanium white and then some gloss glazing liquid. So um, if you don't have these exact colors, just use what you've got that's similar. It won't matter really. I'll, um, I'm mainly going to be doing browns and kind of golden um, yellow tones off white for my nest. And um, we can alter the color by glazing over them. And I'll show you how to glaze here towards the end and show you how important it is to know how to glaze um, to change up a composition like this. It's really um, makes a big difference. So it's kind of a neat technique to know. Um, and we'll also be using, um, we'll go over our brushes. I've got a 10 filbert that I'm going to start out just to lay in some of the block in some of the colors, but you're going to want if you don't have one of these special dagger striper brushes, they're kind of like an angle brush and a filbert um, all in one. Um, if you don't have one of those, you can grab an angle brush. You can see the difference. This one's got just kind of almost twice as long on the long end, on the pointed end, um, and it's rounded on this end. So it'll make great grasses and things, but if you don't have that one, the angle brush will work just fine for it as well. Um, or even a round brush would work for all of these grasses and things like that. Um, and so I'm going to be using probably all three of those brushes, um, probably uh, my quarter inch um, angle, uh, I'm sorry, quarter inch dagger striper and three eighths inch angle brushes. And then I'm going to grab my round brush, um, number two round to do some sketching and things. These are all Princeton brushes. The black handles are Aspen and the red handles are the velvet touch. Um, and then this dagger striper is a mini detailer. It's called from Princeton. So, all right. And I'll mention the brushes if I use other ones. I'm, I ought to mention these blenders too. I'll probably grab those too to do some of the blending on the eggs. But for the most part, I'll do most of my flowers and um, detail work with um, these three brushes right here. So, oh, and yes, thank you to Fredericks, our canvas sponsor, and to Princeton, our brush sponsor, for providing our brushes and canvases. All right, I just made another order of Princeton brushes and we'll <laughs> so what go did through you, a lot of brushes. What did you do this weekend after the last show on Thursday with your brushes. Yeah, I left my brushes in water. Don't ever do that. Pretty much ruins them. Not good for them. I was so excited. I had 
family, yeah, you know, family here, and I forgot what I was supposed to be doing. All right, I'm going to get some burnt umber and black, and I'm just going to kind of mark out the middle of my nest, and this will kind of give me a, a milestone for my background color. Really, the dark, darker the better underneath my nest here. So this will be kind of my nest parameters. It's basically just a big circle, oval shape with kind of uneven edges. Um, right in the middle here. And then we're going to paint over, obviously, more detail on this and add actual branches and things. But we're just laying the dark underneath our lighter branches. This will give it de depth and nice dark interior underneath our nest. Okay, that works. And then I'm gonna just use the same color and grab some turquoise, some of this teal color, some phthalo blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm gonna use that kind of dark turquoisey color. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. On these ones, I kind of went more burnt umber for the background. Um, but I think I'm gonna use more of a turquoise just because my bird is black and I need it to stand out a little bit against it. So I think I need to have a little bit lighter color here. And this is not gonna be enough to cover my canvas. I'm gonna get a little bit more of it. Mix up a little bit more. And the burnt sienna, what it does is just kind of tone down that, that turquoisey color so it's not such a bright color. It'll just make it look a little bit more natural and neutral. Um, all right. And I didn't do this, but I, I'm going to go ahead and just spray the this side of the canvas. Um, spraying the canvas with water will help the paint absorb faster into the canvas. It goes on smoother. It's, it doesn't kind of, kind of feels, not quite sticky, but it just it kind of feels like rough like you're just kind of dragging and um, not getting anywhere if your canvas is raw and not it doesn't have any water or any paint on it already so this just helps kind of the paint move around a little bit easier <clears throat> I'm gonna get some burnt umber add it to this color and darken up my corners here a little bit and it's okay if this doesn't look even. We're just going to have to give it a second coat because it's not covering very well on my first coat. I can add a little bit of unbleached titanium to make it more opaque if I need to because this color here, the turquoise or the teal is opaque. It's got white in it, but the other colors are not um, very opaque. Well, the burnt sienna has got some opacity, so... But the phthalo blue is very, very transparent. So a lot of times you'll need a two coats when you're using it. Totally normal. Get a lot of, not a lot, but I'm, I get every now and then I'll get a comment from somebody saying that their paints, they bought the good paints, but they don't work and they have trouble covering. Um, they, don't, they don't cover the canvas and they have to use a lot of paint and um, that's probably they're probably trying to cover with transparent colors so if you're doing that then um, just add a little bit of white to it for your undercoats and then it it will cover better and then you can do your upper layers with just the transparent color and it'll cover a lot better do two coats instead of three or four if you got that little bit of white in there in that first layer it doesn't take a lot of white to make it more opaque, so. All right, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of the dark here and expand that out a little bit. And it doesn't matter if this transition here is blended out at all. It's going to be covered by other colors and things, so it won't matter. I'm just going to clean that out. Okay, so if we were painting a black hole, we'd be done right now. What? <clears throat> if we were painting a black hole, we'd be done right now. Right, done. Ta-da. Or an eyeball, like, really, really close up. <laughs> 
So you could take this in different directions for sure. <laughs> so all kinds of different things this could be. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna put out some more burnt, burnt umber too while I'm thinking about it. So I can move quickly while I'm. I used the fluid paints um, on some of these colors that I, that I had the fluid acrylics just because it allows me to move a little faster. These are already fluid and so you, with this brush here, you have to kind of think of it like a liner brush where they're, um, the paint won't really flow off of it very easily if it doesn't if it isn't thinned down. So having the paint already pre pre fluid, pre thinned, will just kind of make it a little faster for me to move and work. Um, but if you don't have it, you can just add a little water to your paint so that it moves nice nicely on your palette easily. Doesn't have any resistance, and that way we can kind of move a little more quickly here on our canvas. Okay. I was trying to let this dry. It's not quite drying yet, but that's okay. So I'm going to get a little bit of a darker color here. I got into my background color with my um, little bit of this unbleached titanium or titan buff and my Naples yellow hue, which would be equivalent to like a, a yellow uh, oxide or some, or yellow ochre or something like that. Just kind of an off, off yellow, off yellow color that even the thing I don't know it is now off yellow so just doesn't sound artsy enough doesn't sound artsy enough okay <laughs> getting I want it to, to be two or three shades darker or brighter than the background color so just enough to kind of show up but I still want it to be kind of muted and in this middle part here the nest comes together and then gets all tangled up to really form that um, shape. It interlocks all these branches. They're not really going in any particular sh um, direction yet. And then as it comes out from the center, that's when it starts to kind of form these outer circle of branches that kind of go in the general direction around the center, if that makes sense. So getting some of the lighter color as we go out. And if you're getting a lot of this color like breaking up here, I honestly don't mind that too much. But if you want it a more smoother coverage, then just add a little bit more water. The more fluid the paint, the less that'll happen. The color won't break up like that. So we just decide where we want our eggs to go, probably somewhere in this middle area here. So I'm just going to kind of leave room around them with that darker, this darker color underneath my eggs. And then we'll start to do the lighter colors around it. And again, we're going to be glazing on this too, which will add a lot of depth. You'll see once we get to that point really makes a big difference. So we don't have to go as dark as we are going to end up, if that makes sense. We're going to darken up the center even more. So it's okay to have like a few little bits of lighter color in here even because we can tone it down when we glaze the darker color and wash in our shadows in there. All right, so I'm just using this brush and I'm angling it, if you've never used one of these before, I'm just angling it so that I'm pulling these blades of grass and the more, if I set it down a little bit harder, I'll get a thicker line. And if I turn it to the side, I can get like long twisty lines out of it. They're really interesting shapes. Um, and because it's got such a long, um, long bristles it holds a lot of paint and so you can do these longer lines which you couldn't really do if you're using a liner of uh, um, even a liner brush yeah or a um, round brush or a angle brush it's a very unique brush in that way because it's got a lot of a lot of surface area to these bristles that you can it's like having 
all these liner brushes stacked up in a row here. Just make some really interesting shapes. So some of these I want to have a little bit more of the unbleached titanium maybe. So I'm going to get, or some Titan Buff, either one, whatever you have. So maybe keep the lighter um, branched branches like right around the part of the nest that is sticking up the most at the highest point of the nest. It's going down in this area, but like right here it's sticking out. And then as it goes around here, these are also kind of falling away off the edges. So they're not as bright. So we're going to do our, whoops, what did I just do there? I have no idea. I know, I got, got a little crazy with it. I was talking about the brush and I wasn't paying attention. I also got it on the side of my canvas there. Oh well. So, I like to do a variety of thick and thin lines as well. So, some wavy, some straight, you know, they're going to be getting different kinds of branches. Some of them will be kind of more like ribbons and some of them will be like sticks and straw and different things, grasses that have dried, um, all kinds of different types of things go into the different nests. The blackbirds tend to, the red-winged blackbirds tend to nest in like marshy areas. Um, so you'll see a lot of grasses and things in their nests. Um, a lot of the pictures that I saw had, like they would be in the middle of a swamp with cattails sticking out and the nest would be kind of in between this group of cattails um, above the water. It's a really probably effective way of keeping predators off the nest. <clears throat> And then every now and then I like to get maybe just a different color, like a little bit of burnt sienna or something like that, and just kind of go against the grain, like just some sort of an odd, odd shape that's not quite going, um, that's kind of crisscrossing everything and messing it up a little bit. It makes it more interesting and it makes it not less less manufactured looking and it definitely is what you would see more in a natural nest of you know um, they're just trying to kind of stick things in wherever they'll fit and then make sure you kind of overlap those lines too so they're not the only thing in that area and I'm gonna as I come around the edges I'm gonna start paying attention to the shapes I'm creating but I don't want to go too much farther out because I don't I'm not ready to um, leave my background looking like this so my backgrounds dry now I can stop here let this dry we'll be able to glaze it once it's the the first layer of branches are done and so let's go ahead and kind of glaze in um, or do a second layer at least on the background may not glaze it but so I'm gonna get this time I'm not gonna get as much of the turquoise or the teal color here I'm just gonna get the phthalo blue and burnt umber and burnt sienna which is similar to what we did in the background um, right here and we just added the tur the turquoise or the teal color to it that had the white in it the first time and I'm gonna kind of just go along the edges here and go a little bit darker and anywhere where I see it kind of patchy, I might pick up a little bit of that turquoisey color to have a little bit of another color to use. But And if you need to go over your lines, that's fine. It doesn't really matter if you... Our nest is not done at this point, so we got plenty left to do on it. So it won't matter if you cover up a little bit of it. I'll say layering, any layers are good layers, you know. Always it just adds to the painting. You don't have to worry about, especially these first few layers in a painting. Don't let them stress you out because they'll start to look kind of funky as you add your first few layers and you'll kind of start to mess with your brain and think that you're not doing something right because it looks weird. 
but you saw how weird it looked when we first put our first layer on. It doesn't look good right at first. It's just normal for it to not look great. It's part of the process. You just kind of have to know that's going to happen and go with it and just pr trust the process that it'll start getting better as you continue to add more layers. All right, so I'm kind of adding in with this um, cobalt teal dry brushing in on top and adding just I don't know if, you know I don't know what I'm like texture and different little stuff happening back here it's not a smooth background it's got all kinds of character and things happening in it Maybe go a little darker in this corner here. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, and burnt. Uh, and um, and they have a little green shade are my colors for this background. Yeah. I think on the these two, I think we use turquoise instead of thalo blue, if I'm not mistaken. But it's basically the same same idea. You know. Any of these blues, blue greens, turquoises, they're all gonna kind of make similar looking background. And those three, if you want them to match exactly, then um, you know, you could maybe what you could do is make the other three this color instead of that color <laughs> so that they are a little bit lighter just just so that this red winged blackbird will show up against the I was worried it just wouldn't show up very well against the colors there okay so that looks pretty good just kind of a nice kind of um, abstracted background and let's go ahead and clean this out really well these are dry so we can glaze on here so this is glazing you're going to grab some glazing medium or water. You, if you don't have glazing medium, you could use like matte medium or um, something like that as well. Glazing medium that I use is the golden glazing medium and it has an extender in it. Regular glazing mediums don't have the extender and they'll dry almost immediately. So I don't like to use them. Um, I only like to use the golden gloss glazing liquid. Um, it's this one here. Not this is not a commercial for them. I'm just saying that this one has a ex slow drying extender, but other glazy mediums don't. Um, matte medium will also um, give you a little bit of working time before it'll dry. Um, so I'm gonna get a little bit of the burnt umber and you want to use kind of a transparent color for this. And if you're not using a transparent color, like my cobalt or my carbon black is not transparent. So I know I have to use more of my tur my um, transparent medium. So either the water or my glaze um, in order to get a good transparent glaze out of it. Um, if I used that um, in a higher concentration, it would just basically cover this. So as I'm painting it through across my palette, you can see how much of my palette I can see through. And that's what you want. You want it to be able to be see-through. Um, that's the whole idea about it behind a glaze. It's just, you're just tinting the color. You're not trying to cover what you've already done. You're just trying to add a either darker tint or a colored tint. So I can grab some of the burnt umber and use that and create a like a prettier brown color tinted over the top. I used the darker black in the middle there. And then I'm gonna use this burnt umber around the outside edges and see how it's gonna tint, darken up all these first layers that we did. So all of that, that white and those lighter colors that we used are gonna now be a little bit darker, but it also kind of unifies the color. Everything now looks kind of part of the same scene it all it looks it's basically like throwing a shadow on your on your image um, we're just shadowing things here you can use any color you want so we could use blue we could have used um, green um, a pink uh, you know any color you wanted to and it would tint the lighter colors to go towards that shade so you know in this case we don't 
necessarily want to do that, but in some things like, you know, maybe a landscape or a sunset or something like that, where you want to add like a little pink to your sky, you can just use a glaze. You don't have to paint the whole thing pink. You can just use a glaze, paint over that area, and you can tint it to whatever color you want. Generally, you're tinting a darker color, though. You're not necessarily doing a lighter color. You're not The tints don't um, really work because with tints, you're adding white to them. So their white's so opaque that it makes it look cloudy, which works for things like fog and such, but not necessarily something like this where we wouldn't want to try to tint a lighter color over the top of this with a glaze. It just wouldn't really work as well because it wouldn't be a see-through. All right, so we got to let that dry. So we're <clears throat> we're throwing shadow. We're throwing shade. Oh, shade or okay. <laughs> <laughs> throwing some shade. <laughs> Let's go ahead and clean up our palette while we're waiting for this to dry. Why don't I let you take that, hun, and dry it real quick if you can. I can. Thank you. We need to buy a fancy Dyson so you can do it in here and it won't be we so have, loud. We have that fan right there. <clears throat> All right. using a glass scraper clean that off just give me a clean area to work with for other colors and I'm going to add well yeah I need more burnt umber I'm going through the burnt umber today that's okay and I'm need more of my glaze too clean that off if you use a palette um the paint palettes, what I tend to do is just tear off, like put all my paints at the one one side, just like this, so that when I need a clean spot to work, I can just tear that part off of the sheet and then I still have my paints up at the top to use um, for, I don't know if I have one of them right here to show you what I'm talking about, but yeah, one of these Gray Matters palettes. Um, that's what I use. Well, here, I tore it right here. <laughs> you can see. So I'll, you know, you know, put my paints up at the top here. And then as I need to clean off my palette, I'll just tear it off. And then that way I've got my paints up there that I can continue using. All right. Let me put out some. These these fluid ones that I'm using here, this, this is a Matisse color. It's the only one that I've been able to find that has a fluid burnt umber. Golden doesn't carry burnt umber in the fluid. It's a light burnt umber, which is just a little bit not what I want. <laughs> not quite as dark as I like. So, okay. So now we're ready to really start putting our finishing touches. Our background's done. Our nest is really ready for some finishing touches, and we can do some really fun um, things. And what I think I'm going to do now is draw in my bird and my eggs and everything so I know where to start putting these um, finishing brush strokes. So I want my bird to, he's kind of overlooking the nest here. Proud Papa. And he's going to kind of skirt the edge of the nest right here. I'm just using a chalk pastel pencil here. Um, something like that. Maybe not that quite that deep. And then it curves in like that. So kind of start at the, the head, kind of get the general size of the bird. The head usually is kind of an egg shape here, if you'll kind of do that. And then the breast will come down from that, just like a slight curve right here and out. And then this body is another kind of egg shape with a, with a pointy wing, you know, depending on where the wing is. Um, but that's kind of a, the general shape. There, I think I'm gonna bring that out a little bit farther though. 
I need a different pen. This is not covering very well on there. Let me get the chalk. There we go. So I'm going to bring that out just a little bit more. That'll be our bird perched in there. His leg's going to be down here, kind of hanging out somewhere. And one right here. And the legs usually come out just before the tail, so they're not like up here. See people trying to draw birds and they're putting the legs up in the wrong spot. So down here, right under the wing, right before the tail. That's where you're going to see your leg come out. Sometimes people just don't give their birds legs. True. Sometimes I just leave mine off. Then you don't have to worry about where fun. they go. Exactly. And you don't have to worry. Can't go anywhere that way. No, you can't. You can't be wrong. They got what? You can't be wrong. I don't know what you're talking about. On the placement of the legs if you don't put them in. That's right. That's right. Uh, maybe a little farther forward. The, the eye is going to be generally right split down the middle of the, the beak. And the beak's coming in. Give it a little triangle there where it comes in to the face. So it doesn't set on the, on the edge. It sets into the face. All right. And then we got black, lilac, lilac. I almost, I was, almost said lavender earlier when I was introducing the video. So Trying not to say the wrong thing. Okay, right in there. Those would be our lilac. And we'll do another like fifth one here so it's not an a even number. Do five clusters. And then our little eggs. You can do as many eggs as you want. Doesn't have to be like this one. Try to keep them fairly small here. I tend to make my eggs too big for the bird, but that's just me. Okay, that's good. I might make them, I can make them up a little bit higher maybe. I don't know, I tend to put them at the bottom of the nest, but this one's kind of looking down on it, so maybe I'll move these over just a little bit. Let's move them over. Kind of more centered. So I'll put one right here. And of course, we all know what the egg shape is, you know. Some of the eggs, though, will kind of be turned up so that they're kind of facing us a little bit, maybe, or you know, the pointy end in different places. So you can kind of get creative with the way you overlap yours. They don't all have to be exactly the same shape. And that looks good. How you doing, hon? I'm like a sugared up kid at uh, show and tell. <laughs> You've been waiting to use that for like two weeks. What's that show? What, where did you hear that? I can't remember. Oh man, I don't, I don't remember. Is that Family Matters? I think it might have been Family Maybe. Matters. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna do the finishing touches on the bird, but I'm just gonna kind of lay in the basic shape so that I can put in the nest details and kind of I'll be covering parts of this but at least I'll kind of have have this and I won't have to redraw my bird because I'm probably going to cover up a lot of it okay so something like that we get these in our yard they're really pretty they come in flocks there's a few 
you see one, you're going to see like half a dozen at least. They're very social, social birds. And the females are just kind of a brown, right? Mm -hmm. The boys get to wear all the fun clothes and the birds, <laughs> bird world. So the women birds wear khaki, <coughs> and then all the boy birds wear just all the colors. Yeah, maybe the girls are trying to blend into the nest so they won't be seen. The guys are trying to attract the attention of the girls. Okay, so I'm just using these three colors here, my fluid paint, same colors as I was using before, the unbleached titanium, titanium, the um, Naples yellow hue, which is like the yellow oxide color. And I'm just going to now kind of really mainly hit the, the areas where I want a little bit brighter color to be. And the, the kind of the top part of the nest where it's the most raised up again not worried about my bird just gonna have it so I could kind of see where to put this and I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more of the brown and do some light brown right over into where my nest eggs are gonna be make sure I've got good crisscrossing action here kind of Okay, looks pretty good, pretty fun. These are really addicting. If you get going, I don't know, at least I find them to be, it's very relaxing, meditative to do these lines and kind of just let, let your creativity take over. You're not really looking at an actual photo for these a lot of times, it's kind of, where would these sticks be st sitting and trying to figure it out? You can look at reference photos too if you get stuck and you're kind of not sure if it looks right or is starting to look weird for some reason. But for the most part, we're going to be covering a lot of this up with our flowers. So when I used to do the nest, I would just do the nest and leave it. But these are kind of more fun because then you really get to like get even more creative because we're adding flowers and the actual bird and things so I used to sell nests when I did gallery shows and it was like my favorite theme to paint for a while there for several year, years actually Mark can tell you I sold a lot of nests I loved them I love painting I still love painting them it's just one of my favorite subjects I don't really know why but I just like birds. You don't have to have a reason. Okay, so I'm, I'm building out areas where I know I'm going to put my flowers to. So I know my flowers are going to go over here. So I want to kind of have some structure underneath them so they don't look like they're just floating out in the middle of nowhere. And then maybe some of this nest coming up and cupping up around behind my bird too. So I don't want it kind of just sitting out on its own out there and then I can get some of the just the burnt umber and come in and do some darker lines with that I don't tend to cover over my lighter lines too much with the darker lines but sometimes you can kind of like um, go over some areas if you see that there's too much of the lighter color in an area or like it doesn't it's not making sense like right here I've got kind of an interesting shape happening so I might want to round this out by just kind of putting a nice line there that kind of just swoops in and makes sure that that shape is established and I can even get some lighter color and just try to find an area in between so I've got like this bright area here and this bright area here so maybe I can go around the outside here and kind of scoot it 
around like that. Just try to find little little spots to fit in these branches that will establish our sh our shape and our direction of our nest now. Now that I've got all my lines in pretty pretty well, just make sure that I've got a really good circular area here that's highlighted. And that's about it. I'm going to stop there. Pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and build out our color for our eggs. So the their eggs are kind of a light blue. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of black. I grabbed both of the blues. So I have ultramarine blue that's kind of more of a purpley tone. And then the thalo blue that's our greener tone. And then I'm going to add my white. And I've got the fan blowing on my paints drying everything out. go in with a fairly light color to start with to just establish my shape cover all that dark we'll add shadowing and things later but this will just give us a good base to work with and I'm going just inside my my lines these to just barely touch. I'll just make them look a little bit more natural if they kind of slightly touch each other. And I really like this blue. It's very good with just that little hint of black in there to tone it down to make it a little bit more of a dusky, dusky blue. It's pretty. I think I'm going to change the shape of this one. Whoops. Shh, shh. Fitzy, be quiet. get some stuff okay yeah that looks good I like the shape of those interesting similar to my reference but not quite the same changed it up a little bit and then let's grab the angle brush this is a 3 8 inch angle we'll start adding some leaves and things so I'm not going to go just jump in and do my flowers because it will be kind of what's on top. So I want to start with my leaves and, and branches, obviously the branches we've already done, but we'll do the leaves here. So I'm going to do I'm a dark green here, added burnt umber and just a little bit of purple. I added too much purple, so I'm getting a little more green here. Um, this will be a nice kind of dark under layer to add. Just some nice green tone. And I'm not worried about the actual shapes right now. I'm just kind of trying to set in some set in some color. And the the this brush does the work. I'm literally just tapping it and turning it side to side to get different shapes, petals or leaves here in this case. But we'll be using this also when we do our flower shapes. Makes it really easy to do leaves. I'm gonna get some yellow now. And Yep, this time of year the fan always seems like it's on during the whole show. I forgot to come in so, here and set my set it up to yeah, slow and cool it off in here. Somebody doesn't want to sweat during the show. No, I don't. Jeez. It gets hot under these lights. 
even though we use LED lights. Man, when, when I used the, I think it was before you started helping me, those, those incandescent lights, holy moly. Because we use a lot of lights to get it. You gotta, you gotta get it really dark, really bright in here to get the colors right on the monitor, on the camera. So it was not, all right, so I made some, I mixed some yellow oxide here while I was talking about other things. Mixed some yellow oxide into my green here too. So this green was the uh, cadmium yellow light and the yellow green yellow shade. And I mixed a little bit of this green that had the purple and brown in it, into it to just tone it down a little bit. And then over here I added some of the phthalo green, or some um, some of that phthalo green mixture, this with the yellow, and, and added some yellow oxide to it. Um, and then I'm adding a little bit of white here too, so it covers, but I'm just gonna do a few like bigger leaves here, here and there. And you're really gonna have to add a little white or do a couple coats because you don't wanna see your your white um, branches through through this. So you just have to kind of pay attention to if you're seeing through it or not. You may have to do a couple coats. So I'm just kind of adding different size leaves here and there. And doing these long ones just by setting my brush down and pulling. Does these nice leafy long lines. And I may cover some of this up with my flowers, I don't know, but I'm just kind of trying to lay some base groundwork for my for my flowers. That's looking good. Okay. I'm gonna get some water. This is dry. Let me get some water and just wipe off my chalk lines. I'm gonna wipe off this around my bird. Oops, I'm getting some green there. That's all right. That was wet. Still, that paint was wet, so it lifted. Don't do this over wet paint. Some of that dark green is still wet, too. So I may wait a little bit for this, but I'm just kind of trying to get looking clean so I can see what I have. It's because it's easier to see what I want to still paint. Okay, there we go. May have gotten lifted off some of that background color a little bit around my bird. I have to bring that color out. I'm going to get a little bit of black here and put in the leg of my bird right there. Okay. And then let's put in the, the beak where the beak's going to be. So I think it's going to be kind of like where the middle of the head is. Just kind of split the difference. The beak's pretty large but it, it comes into the face more than it it starts kind of right in here and it comes out. Kind of like that. So this back part here creates a V shape right here. And then the eye, not too far away from it. Right in there. Our neighbors are really making a lot of noise today. Yeah. Honking and all kinds of whatnot. Of beeps. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let me get some of my blue for my egg. 
I always like to use the same colors in other places, you know, so if I have a new color, which that blue is a kind of a color that we hadn't used anywhere else. So let's use it in our in our bird. It makes sense that he would have some of the same colors as our egg, is his eggs. Even if it's just in the kind of highlights of his black wings. So let's pick the wings, speaking of, and we'll just kind of do the line in front of that wing there. Create a highlight. And then I can get the black and just kind of put some lines through. There we go. Really easy to paint birds if you're kind of just doing them sort of impressionist style like this. It's very, really fun. I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue and add some of that to my black areas. Add a really nice, interesting depth to my bl black. Not so plain, but I'm gonna give it a kind of a glow. We can go over some of these light blues that I already did and that'll it'll make that ultramarine blue show up even more. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and use a little bit of this light blue to a little bit of black. So just make kind of a mid-tone color and I'm gonna gonna just use it to create a line for my leg. And I'm gonna just kind of draw in some feet, just some kind of curved lines basically. I really don't have to show much with the feet, just as long as they curve under, they're grabbing onto the branches or something here, just making sure that we have some toes there. That's all we need to do. Doesn't have to be super well defined. Maybe do one kind of coming off the back, so it's got a little stability there, but there we go. Nice. All right, I'm going to use the angle here, and I'm going to load just the tip of the brush with some color to start adding some, some shadowing to my eggs. Now let's go ahead and use this blue here, this ultramarine blue that we had a little bit of the black, why not? I'm gonna add just a little bit of that darker nest color, that, or the darker blue, with the, the two blues with the black right here, and then I added a little bit more white for this one, so I'm using that little bit darker version with the black and ultramarine blue that I was using on my bird over here. So I'm gonna use that on my nest here, and I'm just just mainly loaded it here. You can, you can see it kinda all the way through, but I've gotten a darker version at the very tip there. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple of net of eggs first. Paint that color on, wipe the brush off, and then use this damp brush and just pull, push that color around and leave it where it, where along the edge. I'm not going all the way to the edge. So I'm just kind of pulling it in toward the middle a little bit. There to spread it out. Okay, so and do this quickly, otherwise your paint color will dry. You may have to do them one at a time. This is trying to dry on me over here. Got a lot of air moving in my studio right now, which is not a good thing when you're trying to blend. great the first time you do this. You may have to do this two or three times before it starts to look right. I used to do like four or five layers on my eggs to get them looking just right. So hopefully it won't take you that long, but I, I like to have a lot of a lot of a lot of layers when I'm doing these. Just 
think it adds a lot to the character of the eggs. Have a lot going on. So I can also pick up some of that lighter version and just put that back in, kind of overlap that darker color a little bit instead of just using a flat, plain brush here. Just using some of that lighter color going over the darker. Push the paint around. I added a little bit more of that brighter ultramarine blue there. Just the ultramarine, not black. I can use my finger to help kind of blend it out too. That always works well. Get some of that lighter color. Okay, that looks pretty good. Good, good start. Let's, um, I'm going to have to let that dry. I want to, I want to add some white highlights to the eggs, but I need to let it dry. I'm going to wipe off the last little bit of my chalk lines there. Still have a little bit in here. All right, let's get, I'm going to get this brush again, the angle brush here. I'm going to zoom out. here on my red wing blackwood wing right here to start I'm just gonna kind of pop that color on there and then I'm gonna use this same color tone remember we were said we like to use the same colors in other places so add some white to that add it to my pink and then we'll use this as our color for our, our lilac, which lilacs tend to be a little bit more pink, but so we're taking a little bit of artistic license here, maybe making them a little bit more of a salmon-y tone than they might normally be, but that's okay. There's could be butterfly bush or something else that has that same similar shape. I don't. I'm not really gonna super define these. Like I'm not gonna paint in all every little individual blossom. I'm just gonna do the main shape of it. It'll be good enough to kind of get the idea. Your brain fills in the rest. Somebody was talking to one of my patrons today. She was saying how she played Pictionary with people from work who weren't artists at all. She was like, it was the first time that really clicked to me what she'd been saying about how your brain fills in the rest because these people would just draw, you know, two or three lines, vague out, vague shapes, and I'd be like, oh, that's a zebra, you know. So your brain really does, like, interpret these shapes. We can just do these kind of cone-like shapes in certain colors, and our brain will go, oh, that's a lilac. You know, it doesn't have to be like super well defined in in this series I've been trying to keep the shapes to kind of more of an impressionist style a little bit more minimalistic on it you know all these little dots and things here are flowers but they don't have to be fully developed we're not putting a ton of detail into them just kind of trying to get the idea of the flowers and let your brain do the fill in the rest. That didn't work <clears throat> when we played Pictionary. <laughs> For some people, yes. <coughs> some of us are that bad at drawing. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
we did save some of the worst drawings <laughs> just to make fun of the person every time we got it out. <laughs> we were pretty cruel that way. Yeah, there's a couple hanging on your mom's refrigerator. Yep. <clears throat> for about 20 years now. Yeah. The boys did when they were little. They were fun. We. Oh, you and your d- me and your dad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think they were all just the boys. They were. Oh no. We we can see where the kids get their artistic talent from. Mm-hmm. So doing three versions, a little bit of darker, medium, and light. I added the blue to, to it, too, over here. I really, I don't know why I'm finishing these before I finish, put the first layers on the other ones, but I'm going to do some with, like, like the four, four petals shape. That'll help make it look more like a lavender or lilac, I mean. This darker color, red, a little bit of that. Go ahead and continue doing our shapes here. The nice thing is this covers up a lot of area too. Let's put in some, I'm thinking I'm gonna put in some up this way. Be sure we're leaving like little bits of the background showing too. That'll help. <laughs> I really don't think I wanted that there. I'm going to take this off if I can get it off without wiping anything else off. Yeah. There we go. I think I want to keep that away. Keep it going down here. My shape was, I was losing my shape. Alright, so this will be the tip of this one. Coming in this way. Pointing downward. And then well, we can widen it out back here, but not up here. I didn't want it to go back up that way. There we go. And then this one is pointing up this way toward the bird. Then once you get some of these other colors on here, then we can decide kind of where we want to emphasize some flower buds. Believe it or not, not, not everybody's paying attention in chat to what you're saying. Shocking. So I, I know. I may be the king mm-hmm. of that mountain. Mm-hmm. And you sound like you're proud of it. It just rem- reminded me of the Barry episode. <clears throat> but I can't say what they said. What? I don't remember what you're talking about. 
it's okay. You can tell me later. Yeah, there's no good way to try to tell you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Very, very colorful this time. The nest is almost covered up by these flowers. But I like it. And go back in here with almost white. Just very, very light pink here. to just pick a few of these and just add some brighter highlights to them. They'll dry a little darker, so don't be afraid of going bright. I kind of went too light on the, the bluebird here. I didn't get his, the highlights quite bright enough on some of those, so I'm going to try not to make that mistake on this one really go bright. have that contrast. If you don't have the contrast, that kind of looks flat. We'll leave some of the darker, obviously. You don't want to overdo and cover everything. But having these little bits of lighter area really make a difference. Okay, so that's good. And then we'll add some more of our red to the wing here. Get some of the magenta and the cadmium red light. Make a bright red here and I'm just gonna gonna give a second coat to this. And then get some yellow. So I'm gonna get some white. Always adding white especially when you're covering up a dark color. Get some of that cadmium yellow light and some of my ending yellow hue. And I'm just gonna go right up under my red and kind of overlap it a little bit. That red's still wet too, so it'll help. It'll kind of blend a little bit. There, and we'll just do like that. in the tip to kind of try to get that brighter color at the bottom. Looks good. Is that in the right space, I think? I think. I think, I think. I can get some black here and I can kind of go over the edges a little. Just kind of blend it in along the edges. So I think I want a little bit brighter highlight on the front of that wing. So I'm going to get a little bit of that blue from the egg. Some white. Just going to kind of use the edge of this brush and just kind of sweep it, sweep it down there. And I'm going to get a little bit of black and kind of, not quite glaze, but I'm just kind of going over it a little bit to it down just a little bit right. Just do a couple of streaks through there for that wing and then do the same thing along the back there. Get highlighted. I had had some of that blue on there but it just kind of lost its intensity didn't it? And those other colors. So let me um, go in the eye here. I'm going to add my black back into the middle part of the eye and make sure I've got kind of a separation in my beak there. 
And then I like to use kind of a light gray, so I'm just going to get kind of a white and gray mix. And I'm going to go around the eye and a little bit over the beak. Even though this is a blackbird, it's going to have highlights that'll kind of show up as gray. It's not going to be a solid black everywhere. So just kind of can add a little bit of blue too if you want. Give a little bit more color. I'm going to add a little white and give it a little highlight in the eye and some highlight along that top of the beak. And I'm wiping that off and just kind of scooping that up. And use a little round brush or just use this brush and just kind of make sure I've got a nice round pupil or round um, highlight around the, the black of the eye. Just like right in here they have a little bit of a round. It just helps the eye stand out a little bit. I'm gonna define the bottom of the jaw a little bit better. black is it's still not not quite dark enough like or not quite light enough I mean I'm gonna bring the head back a little bit I feel like it's a little short right there hmm Yeah, it's just kind of blending into that, isn't it? Hard to do it now because I've got all this nest and things in the way. I'm trying to kind of add a little bit of that turquoise back there. <sighs> yeah, I'm not happy with that. Hmm. Not really sure what I can do about it though. Unless I just make that bird really, really dark along that back edge. Maybe make it more black. Not, not have any of the lighter color so close to the edge. That helped. A little bit. I still think I did the background too dark. That's a shame. Let me see if I can lighten it. I'm going to put this on kind of transparent like. It's impossible to go around these net these sections. I may have to just redo that. Let's see if we can make this work. Get a big bigger brush here. I think if I blend it out into that darker, it should work okay. Yeah, that worked. I'm going to 
I blended it in. Let's go ahead and do it over here so we've got it in a couple other places. It's not the only place we've done it. And again, if we get it over these these lines, we can always do them again if we need to. There we go. All right, that works. It's not perfect, but it it it's blended enough that I don't mind it. I'm blending out that a little bit more. this brush here and get some white. This is the, mm -hmm. actually before I do that I'm going to do something in my nest. I'm going to darken up around my eggs. I'm going to get some burnt umber, a little bit of black. And I'm going to go around my eggs here and on the eggs too just a little bit. Darken them up. In between the eggs and in the nest itself, on the nest itself. Especially in like the little corners like this where we know that there's going to be overlapping. Define the shapes of the eggs a little bit better. Okay, this egg's got a weird shape here. We need to resolve that. this black with some white and just use the tip of this brush and make some speckles. The black red winged blackbirds have these interesting speckles that run and there's like lines through too. So there's they tend to kind of be on one side of the egg but they can be on both sides. And some will be kind of more transparent than others so you know do some kind of solid black and some that are really light and faded let your brush drag and do some thin lines through some places keep them fairly small having the Transparent and the solid is the key though, because that'll that's what'll make them look a little bit more realistic. I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to them too, so they're not just black. And they're really random shapes, so don't uh, don't do them all the same roundness. And they're really not even round. Most of them are kind of a speckled like a almost geometric shape. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm gonna get my white. <clears throat> now it's more glazing liquid. Get some white. You can use zinc white if you have it. 
transparent and a little bit of glaze, I mean. And I'm just gonna tap in towards the center of the widest end. So wherever your egg is the widest, and kind of towards that end, I'm gonna put this highlight kind of right in the middle. If your light was coming from one side or another really sharply, you could kind of make this a little bit more to one side, but we're not gonna do that on these ones. These are pretty middle of the road there. Okay, so that did nicely. And then I can do a little bit more of just the bright white if I want a little bit more of a concentrated highlight and just kind of tap just a little brighter highlight on each one of them. I'm just kind of dragging, dry brushing a little bit of a highlight on there. Okay, um, I think the you know, only we've got left to do is just do a little cleanup work. So I'm gonna get some, did I end up using, I don't think I end up using that one. I'm gonna use my two watt round, just a small round brush. I'm gonna get my black again. I'm gonna fix his eyes. Just make sure that it's round. Nice round shape. Okay, get a little bit more of the white. Make a light gray. And too far through my brush there. Okay. If you make a mistake, you can just usually use your brush to kind of clean it up. That's what I just did. like I made that wing a little long. I think that's why it looks weird to me. with that it won't really like show up from a distance but when you get close you'll be able to see the detail it'll be nice you'll have just a little bit of a little bit of an extra detail there you get a little bit of white and put it over the top of the eye a little bit of gray there didn't go on right, so I'm going to try that again. Use the white to kind of... My paint is super sticky. It's just not cooperating with me right now. It's globbing up on my brush weird. a little little bit of a highlight coming off the eye there
part of my problem is I have like a altered photo that I'm looking at. It's not the regular reference photo. It's got altered colors and I'm not really liking the detail that I'm seeing. So I'm having a hard time simplifying the detail because I don't have any in my photo. <laughs> and I don't really like what I'm seeing. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, and that helps. That means I get two brownies after the show. <laughs> <laughs> was <clears throat> out crying. Did you talk about Patreon? I didn't. Okay. Well, we'll do it real quick because it's the last day of the month, so don't sign up today. Yeah. <clears throat> we only say that because Patreon bills on a monthly cycle, so the first through the end of the month. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. Just want to go to talk then. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so over patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, uh, there's different levels. And so starting at the $2 level, you got the traceables, which will, like for this one, will be available after the show today. Angela. Yeah, I create the traceables from the finished painting. Somebody was asking for one. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't do it. Generally, I don't do it if I'm going to be changing or drawing from, you know, from my own whatever, because I like to. I like to do the traceable from the finished painting. Right, because sometimes it changes up through the show. Right, and then I, it, you know, people want the one that I've done and end up having to do it twice, so mm -hmm. it just saves time. All right, that's a little bit better. I still think I kind of got that wing a little, little low, but thank you, hon, for that reference. It helped. You're welcome. So, and then, then there's other levels. There's a five dollar level where you get. The traceable plus the a bonus video that we do once on each month and then the ten dollar level you get all that plus also a challenge image which she does on thursdays all through the month so it's one painting painted each thursday yeah and this month we're it's it was a two month we're going into our second month on the some of them if it's a particularly challenging challenge image well take two months to finish them <laughs> that's why I called it that because they're challenging and they're not just challenging for patrons they're challenging for me too I pick things that are things that I haven't done on YouTube or things that I've never painted before or, you know find a little particularly interesting that I know are going to take a long time usually they're they're paintings that a lot more in depth a lot more detailed, a lot more um, advanced. This is the one we're working on right now. I'll show it. It's called Animals of Asia. And we're doing a compilation of different animals from all over Asia. And we'll do all the continents eventually. And we'll have one of these for each. I think somebody was suggesting it'd be really cool to see this on like a really, really large canvas. And just kind of start from one end to the other and kind of do all the animals all the way across. So they'll each have some sort of a landscape, flora, fauna from each individual continent. Um, so we're going to be adding some banana leaves and some different more tropical or orchids and things like that. There'll be a deer and a slow loris um, animal over on this side. Um, yeah, so kind of fun. Been a fun project. And then we're doing a landscape for our bonus video for the $5 level this, this month. So, all right, I, I'm almost done. I think um, I want to add a few more leaves and then we're, we'll be done. I'm, the bird gave me more trouble than it normally does for <laughs> blackbirds. Usually don't take me that long to do. But this one, I think because my background was so dark, it's just not showing up, you know. So I'm having trouble like defining my bird today which has kind of been frustrating but it's it is what it is you know 
painting is a process, not a science. You just never know exactly how it's going to go until you get in there and start it, a painting. I have an idea in my head of how things are going to look, but it doesn't always turn out that way. That's okay. You just have to be kind of adaptable and figure out what the canvas wants to do. Some paintings fight you more than others. So I want to add these little bops, bops of the bright turquoise just to add a little, little finishing touch. I think I needed it that, that color. just had family over for the holiday. Got to see our little grandson Liam. And his handlers. And his handlers, yeah. <laughs> Parents. Fitzy is desperately needing some alone time with mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> do a little bit of the bright bright green here. I'm going to get some of my unbleached titanium. Do I'm going to just go back over some of these leaves that I did before and add a little highlighting to them. Now that I've got everything else in just add a little bit more definition to them. green, add a little white and a little bit of this yellow to it. I'm just going to go in here and add some highlights on those areas where I had those really dark, dark greens. It's okay to leave some of the dark. You want the contrast, but just a little, a little bit more variation color. And then I'm going to add I guess they don't have, I was going to add a little yellow to the centers, but they don't really have that in the these flowers. Okay, so I won't do that. But I do want to add a little bit of yellow though, so I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. Yellow is always a nice little finishing pop in flowers. Adding a little yellow somewhere. So we'll just add some little dots of yellow. Maybe it's And I want to be random about it. I don't want them to be all in the same spot all the way around. So move them around. There we go. The yellow just kind of brightens things up. Adds a little extra detail. You won't even really notice it. Right, but it, it'll make a difference. All right. For what? Oh, yeah. Go for it. I'm going to add a little brighter, brighter highlight right there. A little bit on the top of the nose, the beak. There. Super chat. Super chat. Excellent. <clears throat> Good night. Super <laughs> chat. Okay, we had super chats. <clears throat> First one was from Patty, and she says, I've missed y'all, or you all. Thank you for this peaceful evening. Aw, thank you. Thank you, Patty. Oop. Pen spit. There was one from Leslie. There was no special message, but she gave it right after I did a, such a superb job at drawing that. Drawing it, so. Drawing think, what? Drawing. Drawing. So I think that's what it was okay. for. For the drawing. For the drawing skills, yeah. Drawing skills. Thank you, Leslie. 
And then we have one from Susie, and she says, thank you so much for your tutorial. Mm. I love every single painting and love watching through all steps. Oh, thank you, Susie. So thank you, Susie and Leslie and Patty. Yes. And Very sweet. We have a question. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to use my pen, my pen, my brush to sign it instead. Okay. I'll let you. Okay. Uh, Sylvia would like to know what other color would you recommend for the background? Uh, and so the bird could show up also. I would just do, it really doesn't matter the color necessarily, just the, just the value needs to be a little bit lighter. So my value of my background is like here and my bird is here. My background needed to be closer to this probably which I thought I was doing. It, it's, it's very um, uh, hard to tell your values. I should have pulled out my value scale and done that and checked and made sure that I was at least like here because this is too close to that. That's why, that's why this doesn't work. Um, it needed to be close either in here or here for this black to show up better. But, you know... It's, it's part of the live show is yep yep but you did a good job and showed people how to recover and you know how yeah they could quickly... i mean it's still it's still a little bit dark but at least we can see the bird now so it was closer to black before mm -hmm. and here i'll put the three together now you can see them all three i don't know if we can get them can get it wide enough there. Um, <laughs> it's hard because they're they're wide yeah, let me see. I can do it this way. Yeah, I'll take a picture. But I think it'd be fun. They're these these flowers and these flowers are kind of close, and they uh, so the color schemes are close enough, you know, that they kind of go together. And then we've got this color in our leaves here, and in the leaves here. I used. Whenever you're doing a series like this, you want to use the same colors. You don't have to use the same colors for the same places in there. You know, you can use different colors in different places, but but using the same color scheme overall really helps unify and make um, you know make your paintings look like they go together. So yeah, but I if you guys like this, I really would love to keep keep going. So let me know in the comments. Again, I know I mentioned that earlier, but um, I really do listen to the comments and um, listen to what you guys want to paint. It's kind of a combo of what I want to paint and what you guys want to see. If we can get it to meet up, it's the golden. <laughs> golden. <laughs> Doesn't always work. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I want to paint that, and then nobody watches it. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes I paint things that I'm not really that interested in <laughs> and you know yeah exactly I try not to do that that often though because after doing this for 10 plus years uh, you can burn out real quick if you are doing things that you're not enthusiastic about so I've learned the hard way to, to not uh, burn not burn out I'm, I'm here for the long run I want to be doing this in another 10 years and so I want to make sure that I'm kind of finding the right things to paint that I want to paint but that you also want to see so <laughs> that's the magic <laughs> the magic formula right there <laughs> yep. all right I am gonna add a little shadowing to that one and maybe that one too and I'm gonna call that good all right thanks guys for watching Really appreciate you stopping and spending some time with us on our Tuesday night shows. It means a lot to us. And, um, and leaving thumbs up and liking and subscribing and all that kind of thing and becoming patrons. You guys are really amazing and have changed our lives for the better. And I hope we've done the same for you somewhat. So, um, yeah, we'll be back next Tuesday with another video. We're going to be doing our mystery video that we didn't get to do last month. I'm super excited nice. about doing this. We were about halfway through painting, not quite halfway through, and Mark was like, if I didn't know what this was, I would have no idea what we were painting. And so we kind of, that was the born the idea of, 
hey, let's let's try painting something and see if people can figure out what we're painting. <laughs> So we'll see how long it takes you guys to figure out what we're painting. And so I'm painting it, right? <laughs> go That'll really be a mystery. Well, it'll be finished, and they'll yeah, still I was be. Say, the whole show will be like a horse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a mountain range. Ooh, a horse. Okay. Yeah. No, I promise. I'll be painting it. It'll All be right. okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.